beautiful friends. What's up and welcome back to the Loosely Bound YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about my January wrap up where we go over all of the books that I finished in January and a little bit of what I thought of each of them. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell so you can be alerted when any new videos are posted. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave some comments below so we can talk about everything that we read during January. The new year started off pretty well for me. I finished eight different books during the month of January and I started three new books that I haven't quite finished yet so we'll talk about those more in the February wrap up. The first book that I finished in January was Imaginary Friend by Stephen Shabosky. I was super duper excited to read this one because Stephen Shabosky also wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower which I feel like is just a timeless and classic coming of age novel. So when I heard he had written a horror novel I was super super stoked to pick it up. It took forever for me to actually start this one because it's very very long it has over 700 pages and the font is freaking tiny like absolutely minuscule like I just knew this was gonna take forever to get through I actually started imaginary friend on December 11th and it took me until January 2nd to finish reading it so it did take a good chunk of time and I wouldn't mind that at all if I loved what I had read but unfortunately imaginary friend just didn't do it for me the summary on the back of the book talks about a little boy and his mother that have just fled town to escape an abusive relationship but then the little boy goes missing for about a week and when he comes back he has this mission in his head that he has to build a tree house before Christmas or the world is gonna end but that only covers the first like eighth of the book from there it just drags and drags and drags and while everything is beautifully written I don't feel like anything was necessarily said aside from that the story just wasn't my thing I thought it was gonna be super horror spooky creepy and it actually was more of like a Christian fiction by the time I finished with it it was heavy and too good versus bad heaven versus hell I just felt very let down and almost bamboozled by this book because what I thought I was getting into was not what imaginary friend actually turned out to be so I did only give imaginary friend two stars on Goodreads and I was very very sad to start off the new year with finishing this book because it was not my favorite but I did have some good reads later in the month the next book that I finished in January is traffic by Ellen Hopkins this is the sequel to tricks and tricks deals with five different teenagers who get sucked into the world of prostitution tricks was very very dark totally disturbing and one of those stories that just stays with you and haunts you forever and ever and I was hoping traffic would kind of be written the same way but traffic was the happy ending to tricks. Not to say that I'm not glad that the characters didn't get a happy ending, but it's just not what I've come to expect from an Ellen Hopkins novel. So for that reason, again, I was a little let down reading traffic because I come to Ellen Hopkins looking for those just very raw, raw human stories. And that's not what I got with traffic. I thought it was nice to have a conclusion, but it didn't have that reality bit that I look for in these stories. So I did only give traffic two out of five stars on Goodreads. But if you enjoyed tricks, you may as well read traffic just so you can see how Ellen Hopkins decided to wrap those character stories up. The next book that I finished is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I actually listened to this as an audiobook on Audible. So if you are interested in signing up for Audible or checking this book out as an audiobook, just check out the link down below because I will post it there for you. But I do highly recommend listening to this story as an audiobook because it was just performed so well and I really, really enjoyed listening to it. Heartless is a retelling of the classic Alice in Wonderland story but it's told from the Queen of Hearts point of view before she actually becomes the Queen of Hearts. Retellings of fairy tales are not usually the genre that I go for but this was recommended to me to listen to as an audiobook and like I said I really enjoyed it. It was super fun to listen to the Queen of Hearts before she became the Queen when she was just a young girl who had all these dreams and aspirations and lived with her Cheshire cat and wanted to achieve all of these things until one day a 
tragedy happens in her life and it turns her completely insane. Marissa Meyer did an amazing job of coming up with reasons for all of the classic Queen of Hearts euphemisms that we're used to, such as wanting all of the roses to be painted red and her infamous catchphrase, off with their heads. If you like retellings of fairy tales and you haven't checked this one out yet, absolutely add it to your to-read list because I thought it was great. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads and I absolutely think you should check it out. Next, I read The Caro Haunt by Darcy Coates on the Kindle app on my phone. I absolutely love Darcy Coates and her books are always good. A lot of times they're not completely over the top outstanding, but you can absolutely count on them to be a good solid read. The Caro Haunt definitely was a solid read and I gave it three out of five stars on Goodreads. A group of people that are interested in conducting some seances and learning more about a particular haunted house decide to hold themselves up in the haunted house to get some answers about the ghosts and spirits that walk through the halls. Anytime you lock yourself in a haunted house with no way to escape, things are gonna get a bit weird and that's exactly what happens in the Caro Haunt. This didn't quite hit four stars for me because there weren't as many scary, scary parts as I would have liked there to have been, but it was a good read and there was lots of twists and turns peppered throughout the book. And I absolutely recommend the Caro Haunt or any other Darcy Coates books for anyone that likes that horror genre. I also read Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk and this book was a freaking wild ride. Half of the time I didn't know what I was reading because it's told through a perspective of someone that is not mentally stable and he's just got a lot of stuff going on inside of his brain. So it does feel a little all over the place at times, but it is a really, really cool story. I feel like everyone has seen Fight Club the movie, but not everyone has read Fight Club the book. And if you enjoyed the movie, I would absolutely recommend you checking out the book. The movie did a great job of really following along with the plot line of the novel, but it does give you a little bit more of that character depth that you don't always get from a movie, particularly with Marla. I loved reading about her character because I feel like she's not that deep in the movie and she just hits a little at surface level, but the book really delved into a little more of her personality and she was just really fun to read about. Fight Club is a super short read, but it might take you a little longer to get through it because the way that it's written when the character's mind is kind of jumping from points all over the place, it's a little easy for you to lose track of where you are in the book. So for that reason, I did only give it three out of five stars. That twist at the end is something that just really, really hits home. And I can absolutely appreciate how great this was when it first came out. So I would still recommend that you check out Fight Club if you enjoyed the movie or if you've never seen it. Definitely give it a try because it's one of those classics that you just have to read. Then I listened to Verity by Colleen Hoover as an audiobook on my Audible account. Verity was so highly recommended by so many people. And when I first started listening to it, I was totally unimpressed. I'm not super into romance books or anything with a lot of like sexual tension or anything like that. And that's exactly how Verity started out. And I just felt so out of place. I was like, this book is not for me. How did I end up here? But I have such a hard time not finishing a book once I start it. So of course I wanted to stick it out and see where all of these amazing reviews and recommendations were coming from. And I am so heckin' glad I did because Verity was insane. I'm not gonna get too much into it on this video because I do have a full video review of Verity where we just kind of talk about what happens and go over what I thought of the book. But all you need to know for now is that I gave Verity four out of five stars on Goodreads and absolutely would recommend this book to anyone, especially if you listen to it as an audiobook because you get a few different perspectives from different characters. And I love that feeling of that you're actually getting a performance instead of just someone reading a story to you. So definitely make sure you check that one out. The next book I read is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. I picked this one up because I had seen trailers for it on Netflix and it just looked wild. Once you pick up the actual copy of the novel though, it's even more mysterious because there's absolutely no summary. It doesn't tell you what it's gonna be about at all. The only thing that I'm thinking of ending things tells you is that you will be scared, but you won't know why. That really does an excellent job of summing up 
how you're going to feel when you're reading this book because the whole time you will just be so tense and so on the edge of your seat even when nothing is really happening i do have a full video review of i'm thinking of ending things as well so if you want to hear more about the plot line of this book and really what i thought of it make sure you check that out right up here i gave i'm thinking of ending things three out of five stars on goodreads and it was just a really solid book as well i just had a really good time reading it and it's one of those books that makes you feel very in your head. And if you're looking for that kind of read, definitely check this one out. The last book that I finished in January was The Cabin by Natasha Preston. I always buy Natasha Preston books and I don't know why I keep doing it. And I'm starting to actually feel a little guilty because every time I buy and read a Natasha Preston book, I don't ever review it or rate it highly. And I just, I'm starting to feel guilty for doing that because I am probably just dragging her review scores down by now. But something about these books keeps pulling me back in. I think that it's because all of the Natasha Preston books are short, quick reads and you get a little bit of that thriller aspect in there so they're kind of fun but they're not ever exceptional stories and that's exactly how the cabin was as well in the cabin there are some friends that go to a cabin for a weekend party before they all go off to college and two of the friends end up murdered while they're there. Our main character immediately falls in love with the murdered guy's brother, and they start doing their own little detective work to try to figure out what happened to their friends, who killed them, how they died, blah, blah, blah. While they're doing their little detective work, they of course unravel all of these secrets that their friends were hiding, holding back, relationships that they didn't know were happening, all these little motives come into place, and it feels like it could be a really good little murder mystery. Unfortunately from there, it just drags and drags and drags, and I hate how gullible the main character is in the cabin. As soon as something happens that could even potentially indicate someone of doing this crime. She's like, that's it, it was him for sure. Let's go to the police. And it's just like, dude, calm down for a second. Like just chill. She's also going back and forth the whole time between grieving over her murdered friends and being totally in love with this guy that she just met and having all of this sexual tension with him. And it's just kind of like a little gag worthy here and there. At the end of the cabin, we do have some resolution. We find out exactly what happened. There's a little twist thrown in there, which is kind of nice, but I feel like from point A to point B, so much of that middle section could just be cut out. I gave the cabin 2.5 stars on Goodreads. Not quite a two, not quite a three. It fell right in between for me. And I didn't hate the story. I just felt like it was way too long. In my Goodreads review, I actually said that I think if this was a short story, it would have done really, really well. But being a full length novel, there was just way too much time for nothing to be happening. But like I said, for some reason, these books are weirdly addicting so if you're looking for something kind of quick and kind of cheesy you may want to check out natasha preston because her books always fulfill in that category at least so those are all the books that i finished in january really quick let's talk about the books that i started but haven't finished yet and these are the books that i'm working on right now the physical book that i'm reading right now is the troop by nick cutter i'm in the very very beginning stages of this book i think i'm only uh, maybe two chapters in so far but from what i've heard about the troop it's supposed to be really, really disturbing. So I'm really looking forward to getting more into this one. I hope it's really just like cringy and gory and stomach turning and twisting because that's always my favorite for some weird reason. So I hope the troop really fulfills on that level. On my Audible, I'm listening to Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. I only have about two hours left on that one. So I should be wrapping it up very, very soon. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a full length review on Mr. Mercedes because it's just really amazing so far. Stephen King is obviously just such a classic author and Mr. Mercedes is turning out to be a really, really good listen. So if you want to see the full review on that, just make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell so you can be alerted when that video goes live. And on the Kindle app on my phone, I'm reading No Exit by Taylor Adams. This book also came really, really highly recommended from a Facebook group that I'm in. I've actually never heard of the author before or 
read anything else by them. But so far, No Exit is really keeping my attention. It's about a group of strangers that get stuck at a rest stop due to a really, really strong blizzard. There's no way they can get out, their cars, they can't drive anywhere. It's obviously freezing outside. So they're all stranded there until someone comes to help plow them out of the snow. Our main character is walking around outside looking for cell signal, which of course they don't have. When she notices in the back of a van, there is a child in a cage. From there, she has to figure out whose van it is, how she can help this child, if they can even get out. And it's just already a really good read. It's definitely one that I think about during the day. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get home and read some more of No Exit so I can see what the heck is happening right now. I'll let you guys know how the end of the story goes for me, but so far I'm really, really enjoying it. And that's all I had for you guys today. Thanks so much for hanging out while we did our January wrap up. Leave a comment down below and let me know what books you guys read in January. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Bye!